whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24. It is the Lord Christ that you are serving. Your journey has just begun. You were just getting started. What is that thing that you have achieved that makes you think that it's okay to relax? A lot of people have set standards and limits for themselves that if they reach there, they start to feel satisfied. They think they have arrived. They say things like, I've done it, now let me relax and enjoy. Our journey in life is not over until we are dead and buried and with God in heaven. There are people that once they land that dream job or that dream house or car, they say, I've achieved it all, so now I can relax. Or others who render a helping hand to people to give to charity, adopt a couple of kids and sponsor a few families, and they say, I've done it, it's all over. It's never over till it's actually over. You cannot stop now. There is always going to be something more to do, someone more to encourage. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says, So, we should not stop doing what is good. We should not get tired of it. If we do not get tired, then we shall receive a good result at the proper time. I know of people who see marriages as an end result. When a man or woman is single or are even dating, they put in a lot of effort in themselves and the relationship and they pay more attention. They invest more time, more money and energy and resources just to prove a point. They want their partner to see them as the best among the rest. They would do anything to impress the other person. But once they finally get that man or woman to marry them, they mistakenly think that it's all over. They suddenly begin to think that they have gotten away with what they wanted. I'm already married to him or her. What more is left? Who am I trying to impress again? There is no need to go the extra mile anymore. They now begin to show their real selves, the good, the bad and the ugly that they were hiding during courtship or when they were wooing her. People most often forget that what drew the person to you should be one thing that you never change in your life. If the man keeps saying he loves your looks, my darling, please do not lose that look. Do whatever it takes to maintain it. It's true that nature happens especially with ladies after giving birth. Some women tend to lose their shape or get fatter. But hey, that's why we have gyms and diets. Make use of them. Register the gym hall. Watch what and how you eat. Eat healthy. Stop all the late night snacks and junk. Take cautious steps to help you get back to the good looking lady he saw and fell in love with. Don't go saying that after all we are already married. Most of all, some people say because he is a born again, he might not cheat or leave because you know he doesn't believe in divorce. Guys, men are natural hunters. They see women, or should I say a woman, that they are interested in as a prey that they want to get and once they get it, that is marrying the lady. They relax. They say, I have gotten what I was chasing. The chase is over. She is now in my home. She is now all mine. So why should I chase again? What's the trophy? Why should I keep trying to impress her? She's already mine. This is very wrong, my brothers. After you marry that lady, your journey has only just begun. Those things you did are made up for for you and choose you. You need to continue doing them. You need to keep taking her to lunch or dinner. You need to keep getting the door for her. Keep paying. Keep surprising her with gifts as you did while you were dating. All of the unexpected messages and calls. My dear, do not stop them just because you are now married to her. And oh, the flowers and chocolates. She is not suddenly allergic to them just because she is now married to you. Your journey to wooing her has just begun. You need to keep doing it even in the marriage. The journey of marriage is not the same as other journeys. You don't just run. You don't just get a trophy and then relax. With marriage, you are given the trophy before the journey begins. You just cannot relax now. Your journey has only begun. Dear child of God, you are a strong person. For you have to overcome everything that life threw at you with your head still held high. You truly are strong and I congratulate you for that. But your journey is not over yet. This is because I know that you have something you badly want to achieve and you are willing to do whatever it takes and sacrifice everything within your power to get it done. Though you have tried all you can and it has not come to pass yet, do not give up. You cannot afford to give up now. You will fail along the way, but please don't let those failures 
be a burden to you. Let him fool you. Because in the end, there is not a man or a woman alive who hasn't experienced failure on their way to achieving their dream. Always be willing to learn. And when you see an opportunity to take yet another step towards your dream, take it. Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 29 to 31 says, He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They're going to soar on wings like eagles. They're going to run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. You cannot afford to quit now. You have only just begun. The journey may be hard. The going must be tough. And you are feeling drained. You are getting frustrated. But you cannot give up now. It's going to get better. The end result is sweeter than the pain you are experiencing. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 says, We must always think about Jesus. Like people who go on looking at him always, he is the example of someone who believes God completely. He leads us and he will cause us to believe completely. Jesus died on the cross that people had made from wood. He had a lot of pain and people were very ashamed of him. But they refused to think about that before he died. He knew that God had chosen the way for him. He knew that God had chosen to make him very, very happy later. And now he sits in the most important place next to where God sits as king. Learn from the master. Jesus, despite the pain and the suffering, did not give up and his life on earth was an example for all of us. Realize that the journey that is set before you has only just begun. You cannot afford to give up now. You are stronger than you think you are and you will pull through. Trust me, you will be glad that you did not give up.